Welcome to Ravenport for my new Let's Play, The Naked Farmer, Episode 1, with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's 8.32 in the morning. We made it. I'm finally here at Ravenport. Our journey down from Lone Oak Farm was fairly uneventful. Apparently, here at Ravenport, they don't have jewellies. That's a shame. Maybe sometime soon. Um, this is where it all begins. This is episode one of my Let's Play. There's a few things I want to talk about on the way up towards the store. I am on start from scratch. I'm going hard mode. I said I was going to. Challenge accepted. It's going to be tricky. It's going to be hard. And it's going to be messy. I'll explain why it's going to be messy. I don't want people commenting saying it's rubbish, you're useless, but the usual kind of thing. Um, we are all more than aware that at the moment the game is in its infancy okay it's not even a week old when uh, at the point of me putting out this video it's not even a week old there are glitches there are issues there are things that are coming up that people haven't foreseen i'm getting messaged like constantly which is fantastic people letting me know of glitches problems issues they found without me compiling a list and that list would be as long as my arm at the moment I'm struggling to keep up with all the things people have come across. Now, what the other problem I've got is people are asking me f how to fix it and sort it. I can't fix bugs. I can't fix glitches in the game. People are asking me, when I've put up a couple of guide to videos, they've experienced glitches or issues doing some of those things. All I can say is at the moment, I haven't. Um, if you experience a glitch or an issue, it's not that I missed it in the tutorial. If it's a glitch, I can't do a thing about that. There's nothing I can do. Um, hopefully when patches come the glitches will become less and less and they'll get sorted and it won't be too much of an issue so that's why i'm saying at the moment until we get patches or anything like that um anything i do contract wise or anything at all could come with a glitch could come with an issue or a problem that i don't foresee so much as i would love it to run smoothly and all be wonderful and you know Plus, there's a lot of new stuff to get your head around. Um, unlike some of you guys out there who have been playing it pretty much probably non-stop and you've probably already lo logged up, you know, 100 plus hours on the game. Because I'm researching, testing things for guide twos, making the videos, editing the videos, putting out there, I probably don't have as many hours in this game as you guys do. So at the moment, you guys are the experts. I'm getting comments left by people telling me that what I'm doing is rubbish, that putting up my guide twos, quite clearly I don't know what I'm doing. I'll say this again, who does? This is a new game. <laughs> For all intents and purposes, all these things that are new about the game are exactly that, they're new. There's nobody out there, even a week into the game, that's an expert at this. So it's just the bizarrest things are being commented and said. Um, and I'll say it again, I know, I know it sounds arrogant and cocky, if you don't like my videos, don't watch them. The couple of cheap videos I put out, I said right at the very start of those cheap videos, if you don't like cheating, you're not going to like this video, so don't watch anymore. I still had people commenting saying, cheating's wrong, shouldn't do it. If you're going to go on there to be offended, then you're going to be offended. I can't... I can't govern that. That's your choice. If, it, if the video says it's showing cheats and you don't like cheats, then don't watch the video. I, I, it baffles me. I can't get my head around it. I know it sounds arrogant and cocky and, you know, it's just not. It's a fact. You know, it's one of those things. If you're going to be offended, then you're looking for offence. You're trying to find things that are going to offend you. I can't govern that. Um, that's just the way it is. What will offend one person won't offend another soul. It just, you know... It all depends. So, moving on from that, um, a few thank yous. Uh, Rob, thank you for the information on the Crone Big M450. Very, very helpful indeed. Farmer Foley has offered for me to bunk down, I think, in one of the garages somewhere. Because starting from scratch, I haven't got enough money to go and buy a farmhouse and do the other things I want to do. Um, which leads me on to another one. Um, please go and check out Farmer Klein. Um, Farmer Klein has put out a video. Now, I mentioned on one of my guide tours, or one, it might have been the map tour, what we need in game is a tent. We need a tent mod. Maybe like you start in a tent, there may be like a camper van or a caravan while your house is being built, you know? So you can kind of build up to buying that big expensive house. Maybe a cheaper house, then gradually move up. He's just done a guide to on a mod. At the moment, it's just for PC hopefully it comes over for a tent mod 
and it's really really cool um so yeah go and check it check it out check out his tent mod guide uh, i hope i hope it comes to console because it's perfect it's exactly what's needed and then lastly uh, jr of redneck gaming thank you jr for your huge generosity you're a gentleman and a scholar i really really do appreciate it so as i've already just said we are on um start from scratch mode mr Sealy p's farming services fledgling company just started over on lone oak farm and now we're here to get it going proper it's gonna be a grind it's gonna be a grind we're on hard mode we've barely got any money you know you look up in congo you've got five hundred thousand. yep but i've got no land no property no vehicles nothing that money's gonna vanish in an instant and i mean disappear so i need to buy a couple of things first off the bat now i don't need to go to here i know that i can just click on my menu and do it if i go to here and do l3 i can do it from here doesn't really matter i need a tractor if i'm going to do contracting jobs i need to have a vehicle that can start me off and get me going right off the bat but hopefully give me enough oomph and horsepower i'm not going to go for a tiny tractor now if i'm trying to save money i could go for the fit 1300 dt straight off the bat and build up from there um it's 150 horsepower which is not to be sniffed at at all um and it is fairly cheap i mean yeah to be fair 150 that's that's quite a lot for a small little tractor there's no front loader attacher on that that's one of the reasons why i wasn't kind of looking at that um Mm, yeah it's a big decision so what i think i'm going to do and I've, you've already seen it in a few of my guide tools already i'm going to go for i did think about going for a john deere but again it's a kind of uh, i don't know uh i want to build up to a john deere i think i'm going to start with the t6 blue power this i think was either it's a ps4 i think a ps4 exclusive and i think it was either pre-order or premium edition you got with it or I think you can just get it in the mod tab on PS4 anyway. One of those, one of those combinations. I'm going to go with the blue power. I'm going to have trailer borgs on it. I'm going to go with the front loader attacher. That's going to be really important. And I'm going to go with the highest horsepower I can get. 175 horsepower. This is the new uh, New Holland T6 with the new engine in it. I can't remember the details of the engine specifically. But the old one used to go to 160 horsepower. This goes to 175, which is rather nice. Wheel set up and going wide. Um, and the good thing is I can change that if I need to for doing certain jobs. I can go to narrows. I can put twins and all the usual bits and bobs on it. But for now, I'm going to go with wides. That's going to cost me 130, just over 130. Was it 130,500? Which seems a bit pricey, but that should give me a bit of scope, hopefully, to kind of get going so that's that bought also now then need for that i want to get a front loader so let's scroll across and I'm just going to get a standard front loader nothing fancy nothing colorful just buy that and then i'm going to get some forks to go with it again don't need to change the color i think you can if you do go with changing color the thing with this is the, it's, it's a tiny little niggly not it's not even a niggle really what i like is you've got your normal colors then you've got ones here so you can actually match up implements with specific vehicles so you've got a new holland blue there but that's the standard new holland blue because i've got the um blue power which has got a different paint like a limited edition paint that won't match up so i'm just going to leave it as black i'm going to leave it as that anyway so we'll buy that as well now to help with transportation if i'm going to take on contracts any contracts i do i can lease equipment but transport jobs you need your own equipment it doesn't give you the option to lease equipment for transport jobs so what i'm going to do then is i'm going to get a trailer and i'm going to start off with a small one um, but it's configurable and that's what i like about it i'm going to go for the stroutman sek 802 the beauty with this is you can go from 4,000 liters to 8,000 to 12,000 so it's a 4,000 litre jump with each of those sections you put on or you can have it as a bale loading wagon so you can use it as a trailer for transporting pallets and goods and bits and bobs that you want to um, I've got trailer borgs on the um, New Holland so I'm going to leave it as trailer borgs so I'm, at the moment I'm going to have it on bale loading wagon but I can then come back and configure it up to 12,000 litres which is going to be really handy um, if I want to use this for any other bits and bobs missions, jobs 
that I will need to do. So buy that too. Here's the next purchase I'm going to do. What we're down to? 355. I'm going to get one of these. And it's going to be a Mahindra Retriever. Now, I know everyone's jumping into John Deere. It's the new in-game and John Deere's awesome and fantastic. And I love it. I'm thinking practicality and cost. That has only got 23 horsepower, the John Deere. The Mahindra's got 83 horsepower. Um, they both do pretty much the same job, exactly the same thing. The Mahindra is also cheaper. Um, and I've been quite enjoying this. It's a bit of a jack of all trades, this. It does all sorts. Having it to move around the map, but it's not just, it, it doesn't just do that. You've got a tow hook on the back, like a pickup as well. And the back uh, truck bed, truck bed, not really a truck bed, but you know what I mean? Can tip, it can haul stuff. It's got, you know, um, tension straps, all the usual. All the usual shenanigans we've come to expect with these kind of bits. So, that is my start in machinery. That's all I'm starting with. So for doing contracts, Mr. Silly Peas, Farming Services, this will help me for transport jobs. Anything else, I will lease and I'll have to take a hit on the fee. So I'm down to 338,000. What I also need to do is buy a bit of land. Now I've been looking in the local newspaper since I arrived um, at plots and various different bits of land for sale. Um, the main farm, if you play on the other modes, starts down here with these fields and the plot of land around here. So if I click on R3, it shows you that plot. That's what you start with if you play on the other game modes, I believe. Not all the other game modes, is it? New farmer, I think. You start with that. Farm manager, you don't. You have more money, but no land. Um, but what I'm going to do is get this plot here above it. It's 210,000, but you do get a field which is equitable to maybe, to be fair, maybe 24, 25 and 26 combined. Field 19, maybe not quite that. Um, plus you get all that land and there's some trees on there. So you've got a bit potentially for doing some lumber, for doing some work like that. So I think I'm going to buy that. So we'll buy that plot of land for 210,000. So that's now ours, that's somewhere to call home. I'm not going to go over to that yet, I'm not going to go and look at it yet, I'm not going to do anything with that yet. Although I'm going to go to that mode and what we've got in it at the moment. Now I've got to be careful because, weirdly, looking across the right hand menu, which I can zoom in on now, if we go down, oh, this is what I mean. If we go down to oat and then go down to potatoes, that colour of field 19 looks to me closer to the oat colour than it does potato but I'm pretty sure that's potato yeah if you look down at field 23 23 is the oat colour it's a it's a kind of between the two a reddy brown so yeah just got to be careful that so I've got potatoes in that field I'm gonna to have to check it um because I think so a quick look growth it's midway through its growth cycle soil composition that's fully fertilised. Wow, that's good. Starting off with that fully fertilised, so I don't have to fertilise it. But I will need to go over and check it at some point because it may need weeding at some point. I need to make sure I get a good yield out of that so I can make a bit of money back on selling the potatoes when it gets around to that time. I'll have to lease a, lease a harvester and whatnot. So now we've got a bit of land too. So we're kind of out of the gate. We're, we're getting going. I'm quite happy with that. Um... Now, obviously, this being the first of my Let's Play episodes, it is about that kind of setting up, you know. I haven't got a lot of money to play with. I'm down to 127,000. I'm leaving that where that is. I'm leaving that money there because if I do any contracting jobs, fertilising, spraying, anything like that, I've got to buy the seed to fertilise the stuff myself. So I need a little bit of money there just to be able to have some options available, really. So to get the ball rolling, I need to do some contracts. And it's it will be a grind. It's going to be a, a grind. But what I think is, by doing um, contract jobs, it will give me the opportunity to use different bits of machinery, show off different bits of machinery, um, that I necessarily wouldn't be able to afford. For example, that harvesting job, if I went straight in for a harvesting job, I get to use the John Deere, a John Deere harvester straight out the gate. 
Um, harvest oat in field three, take the product to the restaurant, use your own equipment or lease equipment for a reward reduced by 815. I'm going to do that one straight out the bat, out, out the gate. Um, that will give me, it says plus two in the bottom corner, if you're not sure what that is, that means there are two other pieces of machinery that it hasn't shown you in that window. So you've got the John Deere harvester, the header, a header trailer, and then there are two more, which I assume will be a tractor and a trailer for hauling um, off to the restaurant. So field three, I'm mean, gonna take the job anyway. I think that's what we're gonna start off with. Philip Elder, uh, 5.04 acres, okay. So accept contract, I need to lease items. So triangle, lease items, progress is saying zero. But straight out the gate, we get to use a John Deere harvester, the T560i. Um, so whilst it, oh, and a John Deere tractor do. So we do get to use some fancy gear, even though it doesn't belong to me. Um, we'll make a little bit of money on this, and that's what I'll do. I'll keep plodding through. Um, our episodes will be doing contracting work, doing, you know, farming services related things and as we build up our money then we'll increase the size of the farm we'll buy more land at some point we'll get our own harvester this is what i kind of missed on 17 i didn't really do this i kind of jumped straight in with either doing forestry or doing silage bales or doing things to get loads of money straight away and didn't do this kind of gradual build a farm thing so that's what i'm aiming for i'm going to stop chatting for a little bit and let's get this up and running shall we That's right, my settings all over the place. Right. I'm not going to use the header trailer, and this is going to prove a little bit tricky because this is quite wide, and using some of the roads, it might be awkward getting there. But. <coughs> oh, just for the record, let me just lower that down and disconnect that, like so. That at the bottom of the screen, you cannot get rid of that. I've had loads of people still telling me to go into the menu. And I keep being told, turn off the help window. Makes no difference. That's the top left-hand corner. I was told, help icons in the game, turn that off. Makes no difference. I was then told by someone, turn off the interactive zone markers. Makes no difference. The interactive zone markers are the hazard strip areas, so you know where to load and unload and that kind of stuff. Makes no difference. I then got a comment left saying, that menu they're looking at, you cannot remove it at the moment. It is what it is. So, can I adjust the header down a little bit, because that seems a little bit high to me. So, we're heading to field... what did I say? Three, didn't I? Where is field three? That's the question. Uh, it's miles away. <laughs> oh, wunderbar. Okay, right. Um, let's... Out the store, take a left. Let's go. Beacons on. Now I don't even know if I'm going to get through this crossing, am I? There's poles and things all over the place. Maybe I should have used the header trailer. The reason I haven't used the header trailer is because it was commented to say that the header trailers are really glitchy. I'm going to go across the tracks. I know that's not the done thing. Probably destroyed parts of that harvester. Oh man, John Deere harvester. Who'd have thought, eh? Who'd have thought? Now, I'm fully aware there are lots of people out there YouTubing already that are a good three, four, five episodes into their Let's Plays. I'm also fully aware the guys that got early release versions are huge chunks into Let's Plays. Um, that's just the way it is. It, you know, it is what it is. I'm a little bit behind the curve on that, but I've been trying to put out a guide to videos and first look map tours and the various different things issues I've come up against and things people have commented and said to me and I've had a lot of people asking me can you do a guide to on this can you do a guide to on that unfortunately I can't do guide to's on everything um, and some of the things are I wouldn't say they're common sense because they're not necessarily common sense some of the things do appear to be a problem and like I said right at the start if it's a glitch or an issue like that I can't do a thing about it a guide to is not going to help you with the glitch that's causing a problem so Unfortunately, where am I? At field six, keep going. This is quite a way to go, and actually the haulage, the restaurant's right back past where we were at the store. So the haulage aspect of this is going to be uh, a little bit trickier. We'll get there. Side turning, we don't want the side turning to be... No. We've got across the river, and this is going to be a problem. Maybe I should have got the header trailer. 
We need to wait for a gap in the traffic. Will I get through between these two signposts? Just about. Nothing coming. Nice. Right. Ooh, that's tight. So let's have a look inside the cab, shall we? All a little bit of uh, a little bit of bounce on the seat there. I do like that. The seat suspension and stuff like that is absolutely brilliant. It's a nice harvester. Uh, field four. So field three will be next to it. I don't really want to drive over someone's field to get to it. Well, we've got to cross the rail line again. That either means going all the way up to the crossing, which is over that way somewhere, or just bumping across the tracks. Which, uh, shouldn't really do. So yeah, I mean, glitch-wise, I've had comments about people doing cotton and the cotton bales come out the harvester and just float in mid-air. Um, people doing normal bailing and vehicles vanishing, teleporting, transporting, disappearing, bales going all over the place, people having problems with headers not closing after they've used them for corn, you name it. Uh, you know, it seems to me the weed control system, after I did my video the other day, seems to work to a point but then people are having issues that on some maps well on some games not maps because there's only two maps out on some of the games people's um, weeds aren't growing at all even though they've turned them on then off again and various things like that oh yeah open up the harvest would be a great idea wouldn't it? they always used to do that on 17 as well just to forget um, they're just not growing cruise control on I know it's for contract work that's what I'm doing He's leaving a swath. Yeah, I wonder if that's left behind afterwards. Or like on 17, that will disappear. Which I'm turn the beacons off now. Turn the map off. We are on field 3 and we are harvesting. Hooray! And we're harvesting in a John Deere. Happy days. Yeah, so will that be left behind? Would I be able to come in? No, I don't suppose, because when you try and bail it, you're on someone else's field, aren't you? So it's not going to let you, is it? Is it? Mm, I don't know. So what I'm going to do now is just very quickly... Now this is the other thing, when you go into the menus, on FS17 the vehicles would stop. On this you can see behind the screen it's still going. So please be warned, <laughs> if you're going into your menus to check things, like the contract, it's saying 4% progress. I'm still harvesting, so don't stay in the menu too long. Pesky birds! Now someone did mention... Um, will or if the scarecrow mod comes back if you put that in a field will that scare away the scares uh, scare away the scares scare what has happened there I thought crop destruction was on he's on why is that not doing that turn the harvester back on big radio. Um, yeah will the scarecrow actually scare away the birds from your field well I don't know if they'll do that to be fair and realistically the birds aren't having an effect it's not like if you've got birds in the field they're eating your seed when you've seeded or planted they're just there for, it's just a nice sort of thing to have I keep forgetting they're there and as I'm going around doing stuff you suddenly they come out the crop and it kind of startles you it's a nice little feature I do like it so you know all round feeling so far with not quite a week into the game I like it I really do I like that this they have tried to make it more realistic and it is more realistic there is always that and I'm gonna get people complaining and having a go at me I know I am that is called farming simulator it's supposed to simulate farming I do get that don't get me wrong and the more realistic it is and the more the feel you get for it being realistic and some of the tweaks and changes they've made for FS19 are brilliant and really do add to that realism. You still need to remember it's a game. And there are people that want to come on and just play it as a game. And even on some of the easier settings, like New Farmer and stuff, there's still a lot in here that is getting more and more realistic. And if you are new to the franchise completely, this is a hard game to jump into. 
because there's so much going on. For guys that have been playing it for, if you started on, I don't know, whatever iteration, I started on 15, did 17 and now 19, there are guys that won 13, guys that won before, you know, um, that are so used to it, <coughs> you're just trying to get your head around the new recent changes. If you're new to the franchise, you're trying to get your head around everything. So again, when I get comments people saying, what's the point of doing a guide on this? Why are you bothering? It wasn't needed. It is for some people. If, if you're one of those people that are leaving those kind of comments, then maybe you've been playing the game for quite a while. Maybe you are an expert. Maybe you are a professional. Um, maybe you're better than everyone else. I don't know. But there are people out there that are completely new, that don't know how to do these things, that are actually very, very glad of a bit of help glad of a guide to, glad of a bit of, you know, and yeah, maybe my first couple of guide tos on this were a little bit sketchy in so much as, again, I don't profess to be an expert on a game that has only just come out. When I did a couple of guide tos on episode, you know, on day one and day two of the game being out, the whole point about it is, what I like to think people think when they're watching them is, I'm experiencing what you're experiencing, I'm going through the same things. The same learning curve, the same glitches, the same issues, and I'm trying to put out to you guys that this is what I'm doing, this is what I've learned, or this is what I'm learning while I'm doing it, and I think people appreciate that. Um, so, I know I seem to be trying to justify myself a lot here, um, and it's been a very weird few days. Weird in a good way, weird in a huge amount of support, huge amount of interest, great views on my videos, loads of phenomenal comments and I can't thank you enough for all of that. Um, but with that has come quite a lot of negativity, which usually I just shrug off and I'm not really bothered about. But some of it's been quite, I don't know, near the mark. Some of it's been a bit of rude, not abusive you know, to that degree, but some of it totally unnecessary. Comments that are being left that shouldn't be left. I'm sorry, but you know, there are a few things I won't tolerate, and I, I, be, people being abusive and rude, I will just delete the comment. I, I just won't, you know, sometimes I start typing a reply and I think, you know what, no, I'm not doing it, because you'll just get more abuse back or whatever it might be. So, you know what, if you're one of those people and you think, oh, I just delete my comment, well, yeah, I'm not going to, you know, I don't know. I'm giving it power just by talking about it now, so I'll stop. So what I'm going to do is carry on with this harvest carry on plugging away um, we'll get to a point where I've either hit let's just check that menu we're on 24% that bar will go up as I harvest that bar will also go up once I do an offload so it will just show that increase of progression in the, the actual contract so when I get to a point where I'm okay to uh, to offload to take a load and take it to the restaurant that's when you'll see me again I've done a lot of talking but it is my first episode, there's a lot that's gone on, um, so let's just get on with it, shall we? Let's get some farming done. If you don't like the chat, I do apologise. I do do it a lot of my Let's Plays. I talk about stuff. last strip. I've unloaded once, I bought up the John Deere, I think it's a John Deere 61, 
61 something M um, and we've got an agro liner trailer on the back of it so I've done one unload of 10,000 litres if we look in the menu now we're up to 80% I don't think that's going to alter now that's going to sit at 80% that will then go up to 100% when I do the offload because as I'm harvesting now that has not gone above 80% for a little bit now and that's the harvest section of this contract done let's turn that off pipe out then it's the transport side of it and we get paid which is going to be lovely that see that's a nice touch I like that there were a lot of maps on, on FS17 that didn't have trains in but because you could drive them they just sat static that just adds a kind of another element to the game doesn't it it kind of makes it feel like the map's alive there's other things going on nice touch that do like the trains going cool harvester and we are empty pipe in close it up see I don't know if this is another one of those little glitchy things or something tanks empty done I can hire worker, select tool, put me track the harvester header, so I'm on he harvester. Just give me the option to turn on the harvester, disable straw swath, pipe out, toggle map and adjust the header reel, but nothing about closing it. I can't shut that closed out now. Maybe it's because it's leased. Right. Turn it off, not a problem. Uh, right, so, while we're on our drive over... Oh, actually, that's what I was going to check, wasn't it? It was the 60... 6145 M. Cover on that. And we're heading to the restaurant. So, while we're on the way there... Um, why the Naked Farmer? Um, that's on my thumbnail and it's a little bit I, did, I didn't mention it I completely forgot whoa that's why you go across level crossings and not bump across field uh, edges hang on um, well there's a celebrity chef in the UK called Jamie Oliver you may have heard of him he was over in America recently messing around with the the uh, education systems food and all sorts of things um, whoa okay thanks um well he started off doing a series called the naked chef and the whole premise behind it was um that it was like he stripped down recipes to their bare essentials you know the bare essentials of cooking and this is kind of like what i did on the Appaloosacia map back to basics so because i'm doing start from scratch i'm calling this let's play a kind of tongue-in-cheek um the naked farmer because it is bare bones it's doing it from scratch building up no bells and whistles no contracts like subscriber contracts i'm doing in-game contracts nothing additional just what it is doing the farming doing the game building up so that's why yeah the naked farmer i just thought i'd uh give it a little bit of a title you know um and we'll see how we get on so far so good get myself to actually put the cruise control on i keep forgetting to do that Um, I know that from again reading forums and chats and comments and various different things people seem to be the outside engine noise is fairly loud but you can adjust that in the settings um, but the in cab one is incredibly quiet now I know that there are a lot of the modern tractors are incredibly well insulated now and they are quieter but I think people seem to feel they're too quiet but you've got to remember the guys at Giants did their homework on this they did all their sound they went out you mean you the videos leading up to release were you know when they went to do the, the for Fent um, and when they were doing the John Deere one I know Martin is it Rabel, Rabel or Rabel I'm never quite sure I'd say it um, on one of the streams said they got kind of caught out because somebody saw them with one of the Giants vehicles out at John Deere when they were doing a bit of sound recording and stuff like that before they had even announced that John Deere were going to be in the game so they go out and they do this they record the engine sounds they record the sounds I assume 
from in cab and to try and make sure they get it right um, I don't know there are guys out there that, who are actual farmers that you guys know more than anyone what it would actually sound like you know I'm, I'm like I say I'm a I'm a sofa farmer I'm you know couch farmer wow oh nice little lad cool so I think in the next episode we'll probably get one of our bits of uh, our bits of machinery our new stuff used now I could have just come in and gone straight into contracting and not touched any transport jobs so I wouldn't have actually needed if I didn't want to to buy a single piece of equipment I could have just come in and just cracked straight on with leasing vehicles and try to try to avoid the transport jobs but that's why I thought I'd get a tractor that way it gives me a bit more option and a bit more flexibility what I'm going to do is like I did on my farming simulator 17 videos um, I need to go around the back of the diner don't I if I do contracts off screen and I'm going to need to do contracts off screen if I'm going to build the money up on this farm if I do it all um, on screen in videos it's going to take me forever and we're not going to really make a lot of progress so if I do any off screen what I will try to do is take screenshots when I get paid or do little time lapses at the start of a video to show me doing some of it you know that kind of thing cover off that's the plan so R1 and triangle will do out and if I look at the menu here we're on 80% that should now go up so let's tip There we go. Menu. Please go up. 99. Contracts on field 3 finished. Plus 241 dollars harvest income. So I earn some money on top of. Look. Oh, camera collision. Blech. Right, well that's the contract done. We're up to 128. But I haven't actually finished the contract yet. So whilst the contract is complete and I just got $240 for something, um, that might have been seed over and above what they needed for the contract maybe. Did I get paid for that? Quite possibly. Um, I don't have to take this, these vehicles back to the store. If you want to be ultra realistic and you want to play the game you know, real hardcore, um, you're going to bring them back to the store, return them, etc, etc. Which you can do. You can take them back to the customised point, which is around the side. The header trailer is still sitting there. I'll have a fiddle around with those and see if I can get them to work a bit better. Um, so you can bring it down to here, because I've used this equipment now. It won't let me use it on anything else, so you can't lease it and just keep hold of it. It won't let you use it on anything else. I can bring it back to here if I want to. If I want to be realistic, I can finish with it, jump out. Now what I'm going to do is go to the menu for the contract. At the top left it says harvesting completed. It does say down there the contract reward is 3057 Take off the leasing cost of 816 for all that equipment. It gives me a total of 2242 which is what I'll get paid. So when I click complete now, like so, that, that job disappears. The three that are left are on there. I come out of that menu. That's been returned, but also the harvester out in the field has also been returned. So you can do it from anywhere if you want to, to complete your contract. I've now been paid. We're up over 130,000. Happy days. So, that's it. That's, you know, episode one. We've got a contract done. We've got a bit of harvesting done. I'm trying to think mentally now for editing, whether this will be longer or shorter than normal. Um, I am going to do... Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back into that menu... And I'm going to take on a contracting job. Accept contract. Yes, please. Uh, transport items from coffee house to ranch. So when I scroll along now to the map, that should show me a red dot of where I've got to take it to. The ranch is over here, isn't it? There's the red dot there. And the coffee house is... It should have a yellow dot. Right, the coffee house is down here. So when I said on my, my first look, there's big portions of this map that if you don't do contracting, you won't ever need to go to. But if you do contracting, what they've done is they've made sure that as part of the contracting jobs, especially the transport ones, you're going to go to different parts of the map. 
so that's the coffee house down here is the cement works this whole sort of thing here there's going to be various different things you're going to go and access and get to use so what i'm going to do now i'm going to jump in the blue power get my pallet forks uh, my front loader my pallet forks and get my trailer go down to the coffee house and get that one done it only pays 400 and something dollars but you think about that in real life if someone said can you move this from here to there and i'll give you 400 dollars that's actually pretty good money we're used to big big payouts on farming simulator we're used to moving fast speed farming build up your farm massive equipment and if you want to do that and you want to play that way there are cheats out there the money box cheat i believe is in production it's on its way it's going to be coming to the mod hub um, but if you don't want to and you want to go more realistic this is more realistic the pricing's low and people are complaining so no, it's too low it's ridiculous you can't make any money i guess that's real isn't it that's the real world farmers don't necessarily make a huge amount of money but that's it from me for this first episode i hope you've enjoyed it um like i say it's my my start anyway we're out of the traps hit the ground running so to speak i have adjusted again my settings and i've gone back to i think i've turned the stop go braking off or on whichever the opposite was i was just finding it a little bit too fiddly so i've just got to get used to the controls again that's it like that it's a little bit anyway we'll get there Up. so if you have enjoyed it give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do thanks for watching <laughs>